Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com. Satellites are by far the most accurate way to measure the temperature of the Earth. This is largely because satellites provide much better coverage of the Earth's surface than ground-based thermometers. Until about five years ago, satellite temperatures were fairly reliable and independent. But satellite data wasn't showing the warming which politicians wanted to see. In this video, I'm going to show you how the climate mafia got to some of the people in charge of the satellite data. George Orwell said in his novel 1984, if all others accepted the lie which the party imposed, if all records told the same tale, then the lie passed into history and became truth. Who controls the past, ran the party's slogan, controls the future. Who controls the present, controls the past. This article was in the Canberra Times, April 1st, 1990. A report issued by the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, concluded that there's been no sign that the greenhouse effect increased global temperatures during the 1980s, based on satellite analysis of the atmosphere between 1,500 and 6,000 meters above sea level. The report's authors said that their satellite analysis of the upper atmosphere is more accurate than surface temperatures and should be adopted as the standard way to monitor global temperature change. And then the 1995 United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report showed no tropospheric warming from 1958 through 1995. This was based on radio sun balloon data beginning in 1958 and satellite data beginning in 1978. There's two sources of satellite data. One is from remote sensing systems called RSS, and the other is the University of Alabama at Huntsville, commonly called UAH. As of five years ago, the RSS data showed the Earth cooling from 2001 through 2015. But now the same data set shows a strong warming trend during that period. Climate data is constantly being rewritten to cool the past and warm the present, because this is what politicians need. The lack of warming which was shown in the original data was known as the global warming pause and was very inconvenient for climate scientists seeking funding and for politicians. One of the more famous climate gate emails was from Kevin Trenberth at the National Center for Atmospheric Research. He said, the fact is that we can't account for the lack of warming at the moment, and it's a travesty that we can't. So in 2015, government scientists decided to get rid of the global warming pause. They said it was no longer valid, changed the data, and the global warming pause disappeared. And the climate scientists had another problem. During March of 2015, Ted Cruz used satellite data in a Senate hearing to show that the globe wasn't warming. I was watching this hearing and I immediately knew that this was going to cause Democrats to put a huge amount of pressure on the scientists to alter the data. I tweeted this a couple days after the 2015 hearing. Now that Ted Cruz used RSS satellite data to prove that global warming hype is BS, look for major adjustments to come. You could see the pause very clearly in the RSS satellite data at the time. On March 27, 2015, I made this blog post. Look for the satellite data to be adjusted to bring it into compliance with the fully fraudulent surface temperatures. The Guardian is now working to discredit UAH, so it seems likely that RSS will soon be making big changes to match the needs of the climate mafia. Bookmark this post. I'm not a climate forecaster, but I have a pretty good track record of forecasting government climate fraud. I predicted that the RSS data would be altered to cool the past and warm the present, and I included this animated GIF which showed the past being cooled and the present being warmed. And as I have already showed you, that's exactly what happened. The past was cooled and the present was warmed in RSS data after the year 2015. Cooling is not acceptable for global warming politicians. They demand to see warming. Now let's look at how Carl Mears at RSS changed his data. This was the graph on his climate page five years ago. The yellow region was climate model projections and the blue range was the satellite data. And this graph came with the following text. Note that after 1998, the observations are likely to be below the simulated values, indicating that the simulation as a whole are predicting too much warming. You can see that pretty clearly in the graph. The blue observations from the satellites were well below the yellow predictions from the climate models. And there's one more important thing to note. The blue wasn't a single line, but it showed a range of possible errors. 
All measurements, including satellite measurements, have some errors, so it's common for scientists to provide error bars showing what the range of possible values are. But after Ted Cruz used the RSS satellite data in a Senate hearing, Carl Mears at RSS came under a tremendous amount of pressure to alter the data. And that's exactly what he did, as I'm about to show you, but the way he did it was fairly creative. This is the current version of the same graph. He didn't actually change the data. What he did was he eliminated the error range. He simply created a single black line at the top of what was formerly his blue error range. I'm going to flash back and forth a few times between the 2021 version and the 2016 version. 2021, 2016. And this image is a composite of both the 2016 and the 2021 graphs. So what Carl Mears did to come into compliance with the needs of the climate mafia was instead of using the middle of the error range, he simply eliminated the entire blue error range and used the top value as the temperature. This is not behavior which would pass for serious science anywhere. Error ranges are very important. You can't make them disappear and you definitely can't shift your line up to the top of the range. And Carl Mears changed the text associated with the graph as well. Five years ago he said, Note that after 1998 the observations are likely to be below these simulated values, indicating that the simulation as a whole are predicting too much warming. But now the same text says, Note that after 1998 the observations are likely to be in the lower part of the model distribution, indicating that there is a small discrepancy between the model predictions and the satellite observations. By changing the graph and changing the text, he validated both bogus surface temperatures and bogus climate models. The justification which Carl Mears used for altering his data was that the satellite temperatures didn't match surface temperatures very closely. But as I've been showing you, and I'm going to show you again now, the surface temperatures themselves have been massively altered. In another Senate hearing on December 8, 2015, Ted Cruz used my temperature graph showing how U.S. temperature data had been altered. This is what the U.S. temperature data looks like if you plot the actual data from the thermometers. There's been a strong cooling trend in afternoon temperatures in the U.S. over the past 90 years. But after government scientists alter the data and make graphs which they release to the public, the graphs look like this. It appears from the official government graphs that the United States is warming very quickly, when in fact it's actually cooling. So first government scientists corrupted the surface temperatures. And now RSS satellite data is also being altered to match the fake surface temperatures. The climate mafia is very powerful. One of them is RSS, which I've been discussing, and they've already altered their data. The other group is the University of Alabama at Huntsville. The University of Alabama at Huntsville data is managed by two very good people, John Christie and Roy Spencer. They've resisted pressure, but have been under tremendous attack for decades. On Earth Day four years ago, climate terrorists fired bullets into John Christie and Roy Spencer's office. The climate mafia demands compliance. And they're quite desperate because they believe that the Earth is going to end in the year 2020. And before that, they believed that global warming was going to destroy the Earth in the year 2000. June 30, 1989, grim forecast. A senior environmental official at the United Nations, Noel Brown says entire nations could be wiped off the face of the earth by rising sea levels if global warming is not reversed by the year 2000. Coastal flooding and crop failures would create an exodus of eco-refugees, threatening political chaos, said Brown, director of the New York office of the UN Environment Program. He said governments have a 10-year window of opportunity to solve the greenhouse effect before it goes beyond human control. The earth is still here, as is the climate religion. No matter how many predictions these people get wrong, they simply ramp up the hysteria more and more each year. And when the data doesn't match their predictions, they alter the data to bring it into compliance. Toto has been pulling back the curtain on this fraud and insanity for the past 13 years. You can visit him in Kyrie on the web at realclimatescience.com.